Don't you just lift up God and just worship God tonight? He is a way maker. He is our promise keeper. He's not the son of man that he will lie. He will not change his mind. His promises are yes and amen. 
He is a covenant keeper. He makes a way where there is no way. Again, why don't you just appreciate God for bringing you into this first day in the month of March. This is a month in which we are all going to be marching forward. A month in which we're going to be breaking barriers. A month in which every stagnation in our life shall, shall cease. A month in which God is going to give us unusual speed. God is going to restore everything that we have lost. Everything that we have been stolen from us. Everything that the enemy has taken away. God is saying in this third month of the year that God is about to open our heavens in a greater dimension. Why don't you just open your mouth and just appreciate God tonight? He is a way maker. He is a light in our darkness. He is a light that shines in darkness and the enemy cannot comprehend. Lord, we magnify you for your faithfulness. Lord, we submit ourselves to you, Lord. Because we know, Lord, that you are ordering our steps. You are ordering our steps. You are ordering our steps. Oh, Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. There is none like you. Let's thank God for life. Let's thank him for life. He, he kept us like the apple of his eyes. He has supplied all our needs. He's healed all our diseases. Somebody came down with the flu. Now you are strong. Somebody was having pain yesterday, but the pain is not there no more. Somebody was having running stomach the other day, but now you are made whole. It is not the heart of man. It is not the medication. It is God that brought that healing. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God delivered you and I from every one of them. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. But of God that showeth mercy. It is, it is of his mercies that we are not consumed. The forces that is trying to consume you are still there. The forces that is trying to stop you are still there. But God in his mercy and his love has kept you, has protected you, has preserved you. Give him praise. Give him glory. Magnify him. Acknowledge him in your life. It's not because we know how to do it. That's why we are standing today. Many that are better than us are no, no longer standing. The same pandemic that stopped many. We went through the same and we are still standing. Lord, we thank you tonight. We give you praise. Thank you for bringing us into this month we are marching over every forces of darkness. We are marching forward into our destiny. We are marching into our greater heights. Nothing will be able to stop us. Nothing will be able to hinder us. As individuals, God is taking us to our next levels. As a ministry, God is causing us to touch more lives. And to bring many even unto your kingdom. Lord, we give you praise. Nothing shall stop us from fulfilling the plan and purpose of God for our life. And so tonight, we are here to say, 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are here to say, hallowed be your name. We are here to say, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our honor. Blessed be your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these souls, for every covenant family. Thank you, Lord, for every of our covenant partners. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that believes in our ministry. Thank you, Lord, for keeping them. For those that are our live stream members, we love you and we thank God for your life. God bless you. God equip you. God empower you in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Somebody shout a big amen. Somebody shout a big amen. Somebody shout a bigger amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Again. How have you all been? You've been good? You've been blessed? I am blessed. Even though we've been going through the weather, the storms, but God has been keeping us, has been sustaining us. It's been a great time in God's presence. So I'd like to welcome us again into the month of March. And I pray and I know that this shall be the most unique month for you and your family in the name of Jesus. For every month according to revelation chapter 21 verse 2 that there is a tree of life and that tree gives forth its fruit every month god has planted a tree for us this year and that tree is a tree of open heaven but that tree every month brings forth its fruit. And the Lord has released another fruit for the month of March 2023. And I shall be giving us the prophetic message for this month. And I know that everything the Lord shall be declaring concerning you and I this month shall come to pass speedily in the name of Jesus. Open heaven greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe every true covenant family member have experienced diverse victory and wonder encounters in our health, family, business, careers, relationships, in the course of the month of February, through the impartation of the spirit of faith, and may the impact of each one's encounter last for a lifetime in Jesus' name. I believe the stage is set for a more glorious, a most glorious adventure towards the full delivery of the prophetic agenda of open heaven for the year both for us as individuals and as a ministry to god alone be the glory but what is the spirit of the lord saying for the month of march 2023 we know that we serve a turn around god we have a turn around Savior. Our God turns the captivity of his children as a dream of the night. Our God specializes in stunning ordinary individuals into wonders amongst men. God's turn around agenda for his children is not a once for all event. 
but a once and again experience. There are no ceilings on our destinies as believers. It is one encounter after another that engenders our turn around after another. Every turn around experience in life is clearly a product of an encounter with God. From scriptures, we understand that we are redeemed into a turn around world after the order of Christ. Also, an open door that shall not be shut night and day is a proof of God's turn around the engender for his children. But it is by applied revelation that we experience God's turn around agenda for our lives. As believers, we are not permitted to be stranded like others who do not know God. But we have been redeemed as a peculiar people on earth. As it is written, the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day. Therefore, the prophetic focus for the month of March 2023 is my season of sudden turnarounds. Can somebody say that with me? My season of sudden turnarounds. Again, can you say that again with me? Of sudden turnarounds. And the prophetic scripture is taken from the book of Psalm 126 from verse 1 to 6. And I believe that this month in all our services there shall be a mountain of turn around encounters resulting in supernatural turnarounds in every area of your life in the name of Jesus. Every area of your life shall experience a massive and sudden turnaround in the name of Jesus. Wherever you've been experiencing pain, it's going to turn around to gain. Wherever you've been weeping, it's going to turn around to joy. Wherever you've been mourning, shall turn around to gladness of heart in the name of Jesus. Wherever you've been experiencing stagnation, God is going to be giving you speed as you are marching forward in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that everything that represents pain, story of agony, of shame, of reproach in your life shall turn around in the name of Jesus. Wherever you have experienced captivity, God is going to turn it to freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom in your health, freedom in your career, freedom in your relationship, freedom in, in, in everything that you hold there in the name of Jesus. And I pray and declare that at the end of this month, you will truly have experienced a massive sudden turnaround in Jesus' mighty name. We're going to pray one prayer that somebody prayed and he enjoyed immediate and massive turnaround. In the book of I believe First Chronicles we shall read from verse in chapter 4. We shall read from verse 9 and verse 10. Somebody saw that his life was not headed in the direction he desires his life to go. And he felt it was time that things change. It was time that things change. And he made a, a, a decision to ensure that this day will be that day that that chain came by his prayers. He said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. But his story was 
a story that is full of sorrow. Because his mother called him Jabez because he bore him with sorrow. Then in verse 10, say, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and thy hand might be with me, and thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Is somebody ready to pray? And what happened? And God granted him that which he requested. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I don't know what has been causing you to be in sorrow. I don't know what has caused you to be in lack. I don't know what has caused people to, 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 to mock you. But as you pray tonight, God is going to grant you every of your requests. God is going to turn your sorrow into dancing. God is going to turn your mockery into blessing. God is going to turn your weeping into joy. I want you to open your mouth and pray that Lord, turn my captivity around Lord in the name of Jesus. Lord, turn my sorrow into dancing. Lord, turn my lack into plenty. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. He said, Jabez, pray unto the Lord is God. He said that thou wouldest bless me. Ask God to bless you. You said the blessing of God. Make it rich and had no sorrow. Lord, bless me indeed. In the name of Jesus. Bless me indeed. Bless my career. Bless my business. Bless my husband. Bless my wife. Bless my children. Bless the works of my hand. In that same scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10, it said that thou wouldest keep me from evil. You know, there are some people, they, every evil always follow them. Wherever they go, things will not just work out. Evil, disappointments, failure. That was the story. That has been his story because of what the curse that his mother pronounced on him. And that has been how his life has been. But a time came. He said, an end must come. Enough is enough. Enough of evil following me. Enough of pain following me. Enough of disappointment at the edge of breakthrough. A knot of failure at the edge of my success. I want you to pray. Lord, whatever represents evil, whatever has been following me, that has been sources of disappointment, Lord and hand comes tonight. Let there be a turnaround. Let there be a turnaround. Let there be a turnaround. A turnaround in the name of Jesus. A turnaround in my, in my favor. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has caused you grief, everything that has caused you pain, everything that has caused you to weep, God is saying there shall be a turn around tonight in the name of Jesus. It has been causing you grief, it has been causing you pain, it has been causing you to weep. But God is saying tonight, this month, there shall be a turn around for you. Maybe you have a child. That is, of course, and has been a source of grief for you. God says there shall be a turnaround. Maybe your business has been a source of grief for you. God says there shall be a turnaround. Maybe your health has been a source of grief for you. Maybe your loved one has been sick and has been a source of grief for you. God is saying there shall be a turnaround. And one thing about God is when you pray, it doesn't store your prayers. It doesn't just allow you to pray. He said, God granted him 
everything that he requested. I want you to know, if man can pray, there is a God that can answer. If man can pray, there is a God that can grant that request. And I know that as you have prayed tonight, the request, your petitions are granted now in the name of Jesus. I say your desires become what you deserve in the name of Jesus. God will give you the petitions of your heart in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One very important weapon for our turn around is the word encounter. <laughs> when you encounter the word, it positions you for a turn around. I don't need again to tell you about the frustration of Peter. Peter was a frustrated fisherman. He labored all night and he caught nothing. But when he encountered the word, somebody say encounter the word. He said nevertheless at thy word. The encounter with the word turned things around for him. Somebody shout hallelujah. The same thing Jacob in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8. The Bible says that Jacob wrestled with the word. And that word processed him from being Jacob and it became Israel. And the Bible says that you have found favor with God and with man and you have prevailed. As you encounter the word tonight, I see that word bringing a turn around in your life, in your situation in the name of Jesus. I like you to say, Lord, send my word that will bring a turn around in my situation that will terminate frustration that will terminate pain that will terminate stagnation in my life in the name of jesus lord send my word send my word send my word are you expecting to receive the word tonight do you desire to receive the word tonight then put your hands together as I invite Pastor Kimmy to come and bless us with the word. And I know that our lives will not remain the same after this encounter in Jesus' name. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. The louder you clap, the faster she comes with the word. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hallelujah. So tonight, we're going to make it very brief and straight to the point. Let's bow down our head and appreciate God. Father in heaven, we thank you for this gathering. We thank you for this great opportunity that you have given unto us once again. Father, without taking it for granted, we appreciate you. Father, I humble myself this evening and I hide under the anointing of the Most High God. And I say, Father, speak through us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let those words, O Lord, will not stand against us, but we use to defy you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we praise your name, Father, at the end of the service, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Put your hands together one more time. Put those beautiful hands together. 
and celebrate God. You know, normally we have, uh, it's been a while, I've been gone for a while. And I thank God for the testimonies God has given unto me. I was able to, I was taking some classes. I was able to finish those classes that I graduated. And I finished it, and they sent me um, my certificate to be in the mail. So I'll be sharing those testimonies with you very shortly. And I just want to bless God for the strength. And the beginning of the year, the Lord spoke a word. That in order to continue this year, we're going to need strength. And honestly, those words, it's been the strength of God that's been keeping us, especially myself, you know, together. And I pray for that strength of God will continue to keep us together in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm very sure I shared it with um, Auntie, Auntie McQueena when the Lord spoke, said, this year we will need strength. Because it's going to be very chaotic, it's going to be very messy, it's going to be very discouraging. And I'm very sure I, I shared it with you, Auntie Wright. And then little did I, did I know that it's going to be tough for me. <laughs> and the trouble came, the devil came to attack, it was all over. But one thing that was so sure, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit kept reminding me, remember I said you need strength. And I thank God, I, I pray for strength, and I continue to pray for strength. And I'm going to encourage you tonight to continue to pray for strength. Strength is what is going to keep us. The Bible says God himself is not a liar. It's not a man that he should lie or repent of his words. If he had said it, he would bring it to pass. He said it that we would need strength. And I thank God I didn't take it for granted. I shared it with people and I said, let's continue to pray for strength and we can see that we really need strength. So let's briefly open our Bible to the book of Job, chapter 1, and we shall be reading from verse 6 to 22. Please help me from the console, please. Job, chapter 1. book of Job chapter 1 verse 6 to 22. So tonight when we, we usually have this um, round the table discussion every first Wednesday of the month. So I think we're going to start again today. So when I'm here we all do it together. I'm not the only one preaching so we're going to be doing this the work of God together tonight. The book of Job chapter 1 Shall be starting from verse 6. Is it up there? Verse 6 to 22. And I want us to read it together so, so that we will understand what it's actually talking about. So if you have your pen, if you have your paper, let's write it down. So we shall be talking about something that's very important to us. That the reason why Job has to cry for strength. And that is going to show us the reason why we need to cry for strength. This month has been declared. It's our month. It's March. Yes, it's a month that we're going to be marching forward. But before you can take a step, if you are in pain, there's no way you can, you know, even if we try to take that step, you be, it will be so painful. So you need the strength of God to take that step with boldness. So let's start from verse 6. And we'll read it together. Let's do it. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present himself before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going into fraud the heaven and her from waking up and down in it. Verse 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my son Jacob, Job? There is one on earth like him. 
He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. And have you not put an edge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds have spread throughout the land. But stretch out your hands and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. That's the Satan talking. Then the Lord said to Satan, very well then, everything he has in his hands, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Verse 13. One day when John, I mean when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking, underline that word, verse 13. When the son, when the family, when the son and the daughter was drinking, and they drink wine at the oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby. And the servant attacked and carried them off. They put the servant to the sword, and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. Underline that word. Only one who has escaped to tell him. While he was speaking, and another messenger came at the same spot. And the fire of God fell from the sky and burnt up the ship and the servants. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. And it's twice now. And while he was still speaking, at the present moment, and another messenger came and said, the gardens formed three raiding parties and swept down on your comet and carried them off. They put the servants to sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. That's number three, right? Is this three or four? Are you with me? That's the fourth one, right? Okay, verse 18. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead. I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. How many? Six? Are you following me? At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will withdraw the pot. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. And this story is what takes me to the topic of tonight, when the pain comes. When the pain comes. From these stories, we read that Pain is something that we see, that we go through, and it happens to everybody. Do we all know what pain is? Anybody? This is Bible study, so I'm not preaching, so we're all doing it together. What is pain? Elizabeth, could you please grab the microphone? We are all talking. We are all doing it together. It's not a preaching study. It's Bible study. So, what is pain? Uh, yes, I know what pain is. How, how do you feel pain? Um, when you love someone, like when I lost my mom, I was devastated. I was in a lot of pain, and I didn't want her to go, but I didn't want her to suffer anymore. 
so I let her go to God. And I have moments where I still shed tears when I think about her. Um, in April, the 24th, it'll be a year that mom has passed, but I know she's at peace. So It was painful. Yes. So can you can you express that pain? Is it something that's expressible? Something that's what? That you can express. Like Oh it's, yeah, it's, it's, I, it's, I, it's, I was I was I had a lot of different emotions. Um I would scream, I would holler, you know, frustrated, everything, you know, but it, I know it would take time. Basically, pain is real. Yeah, yeah. We all know pain is real. Okay, yeah. look at Joshua today. He could not play because he was having very bad headache. She, he looked at him. The tears was coming out of his cheek. The pain he was feeling, it was real to him, right? Yeah. So look at the pain that Job went through on the same spot. Five or six different people came to give him what? A report of evil that was so painful that he could not. The Bible says at the point, at last message he got, the Bible says he tore out his clothes and he fell down on his face. When he fell down, the pain was so much that he could not, he could, I, I, I just don't even want to imagine how what kind of pain he was feeling at that moment? But when the pain comes, what do we do? How do we embrace the pain? What do we do to help us bring when we are in so much pain? And how do we undo the pain? That is my question tonight. Asking God to, to, um, to strengthen you and, and take the pain away that you're feeling. Okay. Mommy, how do you... Ex how do you how do you handle the pain when the because my topic tonight is when the pain comes what do you do? We just read the story of Job. We know what he did. But the thing is, though, it's easier said than done. True. When you are that, but when that thing is happening, the place that comes out of your mind to come to you is prayer. I mean, isn't it true, though? Because it just happened to me the uh, day I heard that the glass house, I could not be the same. People that really know me have withdrawn from so many things because I could not. That was like my baby that I had for thirty solid years. You understand? I could not. I the least the the, the, the the least that came to mind was prayer. I could not even pray. I was de devastated. I was completely numb. Up to now, I am still numb. When you are numb, I'm, I'm not even bold enough to drive off a black soap. That is kind of at that moment. Most most. I mean, let's be realistic. Prayer is the last thing that comes that cross your mind. When that pain comes, it's so painful that some people are numb to prayers, some people are numb to tears, some people they will become emotional, some people they will be so devastated that they just they they, they are looking at you, but they are not really looking at you. Are, are you with? I don't know. I don't know if anybody has felt such pain. I mean, painful heart before. And such as was the story of Job. See, when Pastor told me you're going to prepare for the, this message just popped into my head. I might see, I'm still, in, I'm, still, I'm still in pain. But one thing that I realized that God has spoken it right before we crossed over to the new year. He said it. But every time I want to cross that line, the next thing that the Lord will remind me is I said it. You need to be, 
you need, you need strength to be able to continue. Hallelujah. So tonight, the Bible, it says, everyone go through difficulty times. We all go through difficult times. No woman in life is free from burdens or cares. This shouldn't surprise us. It should not be surprised when, the, when those things come, when those disappointments come, when people throw things at your face, when they ridicule you, when they disrespect you, when they talk behind your back, when they do things that will really, really hurt you, that make you feel like, I mean, so belittled of yourself, that make you feel like the whole world is going to collapse right into your face. The Bible teaches us that life will be painful at all times. At times. Actually, most times. It's very painful. It could be painful. But man that is born, the book of Job chapter 14 verse 1 says, man that is born of a woman of a few days full of trouble. So there's always going to be troubles all the time. It's when the trouble comes, what do we do and how do we handle it? In my own situation, it was, I was just, I was just devastated. I didn't want to do anything. Nothing really matters to me, but just, you know, I just look at things as so, I mean, I look at people, I see people differently. I, I, I just don't know. I, because the pain was so real to me. Hallelujah. The Bible says, when, when yet a man is born unto troubles. That's Job chapter 5, verse 7. I want you to mark it down. It says, yet a man is born unto trouble as his sparks flies upward. It says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in may you, in this life, you have peace. And in the world, ye shall have tribulations. But be of what? Of good share. Why? Because God, I have overcome the world. So in everything, in every situation, every pain, in every tribulation that we see, the Lord has given us promise that, you know what though? Be of what? Of good share. The story of Job that we just read, five times. How many people, how many of us? Did somebody tell you in your first, the, their first son just died? The daughter, boom, their house collapsed on the same spot. <laughs> it's not something that's bearable. That on the same spot, he has not moved at all. The Bible says the bad news was just coming from left and right. They were just, this one said, I was, I'm the only one that escaped. The other one came and said the house just collapsed. The other one said the child, the son, and the daughter was just drinking. They were married. They, they, were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were at their brother's house. And guess what happened? They died. Everything Job had, the same, couple, it's not years ahead. It happened almost immediately. And guess what? The Bible says he fell on his face. Instead of him start cursing God, instead of him start whining, instead of him start complaining, guess what he did? He started praising God. How many of us, be real, let's be realistic right now. How many of us, I was talking to a brother yesterday, he looked at me and started crying. And I started crying too. And we were both, we were both there crying. And he said, why are you crying? And I said, why are you crying too? And he said to me, I said, I lost my, my, my building that's so special to me. And he said to me, I lost my son. That's so, I'm going to be buried. He said he'll be burying his son tomorrow. And that just stopped. I could imagine. Now I was like, okay. You, you, you know what I mean? I, at that point, I could not even, I was speechless. Because his pain, I, it's just, I could not function how deep that pain, that scar. It's not a little boy, it's 18 years old, at the prime of his age. And the devil just took it. And you know one thing he told me? He said, be of good share. You know why? Because I know it's the right time. Most times, we don't see the right time when bad things happen. Because when God does the things, he will do it at the right time. He said, 
that is the time that he's supposed to leave. And he has done his part. And it was what actually preaches to me. And I learned from that. You know why though? That was that thing. But God has ministered to him for him to minister to me through my own pain. Are you with me? So what do we do when we have pain? What do we do? How do we handle it? How do we, do you curse God? Do you speak ill? Do you curse people around you? Do you, do you, what do you do? Do you go ahead and pray? Do you go ahead and curse God? Do you whine God? Do you tell God why did he allow it to happen? Do you have so many questions? What do you do and what are you going to do when pain comes? When the pain comes, we are not to be passive. We are to be proactive. I want you to mark it down. When the pain comes, we are not to be passive, but we are to be proactive. God has, has certain expectations regarding our attitude and our behaviors when the pain comes. He requires some things from us. Some of us as Christians, as children of God, when the pain comes, we turn away from God. I was listening to pastor today when he, he met, I think, I guess, I was on the phone, I think he met somebody else, and he said, he was telling the person, this is the church, this is the house of God, you need to come to church. He said, there's no God. Why? He probably already gone through his pain. Instead for him to embrace that pain and see good things coming through that pain, guess what? He started cursing God, didn't want to believe in God, didn't want to have anything to do with God. And I was talking to somebody, he said, why, why would God allow this to happen to me? Why must it have to be me? And I said to the person, if not you, who else can it be? Who else? It has to happen to somebody anyway. Hallelujah. I have come to encourage you tonight. When the pain comes, don't be those like those people that turn their way, their eyes against God. When the pain comes, what do we do? Number one, we must be devoted to God, like Auntie said. When the pain comes, we must be very, very devoted to God. Consider everything Job lost. He lost his family. He lost his house. He lost his children. Many people facing such trials and losses would have reacted towards God negatively. Many would have turned on the Lord, blaming him for troubles. Many would have turned and started cursing his name. But guess what, Job? He did not do that. I almost lose my mind. I was literally walking like a dead person. I didn't even want to talk to nobody. I didn't even want to discuss nothing with my husband. I didn't even want to talk to anybody. I was completely shut down. The pain was real. What will it take to make us turn against God? And that is exactly what Job did. He said, naked I came. Naked I will depart. It's about time for us to see things in a different way. That when you come to this world, we came naked. And when we go back, we will go back naked. All these things that is making sense to us, when that day comes, it will not make sense anymore. You won't even remember even to, to talk about it. I was sharing the testimony of a woman that I know very well, very, very close to this woman. Very close to this woman. She turned 92 years old. This woman, you see her, you will never know she was a millionaire. She had a boyfriend, a fiance supposedly. And this woman was, I think, eight or ten years older than the man. She kept saying, I don't want to outlive this guy. I don't want to outlive this guy because everything I have is in his hand. If he dies today, I don't know what I'm going to do. So one day she told me, she said, you know what, maybe I need to start. I don't, I don't want, I don't, 
She said, I just think, I just have a feeling that he's going to die before me. He's going to die before me. Lo and behold, this, this guy died. He did not have a will, but whatever it is, left everything to her. She came to me, she said, Kemi, I told you. So what am I going to do? A 92 years old woman. She started trying to pull everything together. She said, okay, if I die, this I have, I have a turtle. The turtle, I want you to give my turtle, whoever that is going to take the turtle is going to have $150,000 to help me take care of the turtle. If I, my dogs, I have four dogs, um, five cats, whoever that's going to take care of the dogs is going to have $75,000. Whoever that's going to take it. So she started, she wrote everything down, wrote it down, she did everything, she went to um, uh, church. And she said, you know what, Kemi, I paid for my funeral. She doesn't have no children, no, nothing, no family member. She's the only one left for, from the whole entire family. So she has nothing else that is going to give anybody to. To cut my long story short, with all the wealth she had, when the sickness, when the pain came, and guess what? She could not stand it. All this plan she made for herself, guess what? Even the person that was supposed to execute the plan, after she died, she died two weeks ago, guess what? She just told me today, she said, you know, they cremate, cre cremate, cremate her. And I said, but she said she has, she spent, she bought herself a beautiful casket, everything she did. Why didn't you do it? Make her to become, make her to go back. If this message has not, if you have never been, if not been able to touch, I want you to, to look into this critically and deeply. Make it will come. Make it will go back. So when the pain comes, your reaction matters. Your behaviors matter. The pain will definitely come. But be of good share, my sister. Be of good share, my brother. Don't allow the pain to make you, to cause you to, to, to cut God, to sin against God. So when the pain comes, number one, be devote, devoted to God. The distraction will come. People will start speaking, bad things. The suggestion of the enemy will come. Everything will start coming. Look at what happened to Job. The daughter, the wife said, why don't you curse God and forget about him? You are still sitting down here. That is somebody that's so close to him. The same thing with us. The people that are very close to us, they are the ones that start going to mock. They will start mocking you. Do you see? You still believe in that same God? Do you still believe in that same God? Why are you still serving that same God? They will start, they will start coming with so many suggestions of the enemy from the pit of hell, they start bringing you different stories, just telling you all kind of stuff to make you, to discourage you, for you to speak evil or curse God. I have come to encourage you, do not curse God. When the pain comes, when the pain comes, be devoted. Job chapter 13 verse 15 says, though he slay me, Yet, I will do what? I will trust in him. Though the pain will come, the tribulations will come, the disappointment will come from everyone, especially the people that you trust the most. He said, yet, I will do what? I will trust him. I want you to trust God tonight. Ask him for that strength when that pain comes. Most of the Christians these days, when the pain comes, and that is when we, we sin against God. We mess up because we see things differently. It happened to me. And I'm being honest with you, it was bad. It was so bad that I could not even be able, it took me a while to get out of my own little hole, 360 degrees. I hated the whole scenario but I just asked God, God. And the Lord was just telling me, speaking to me. I told you that you need strength this year. I told you that you need strength this year. And 
thank God that I have obeyed. And I'm giving glory to God. The pain is real. It was real. And that is what it is to a lot, a lot of us. What do you do? Be devoted unto God. Number two. We must be dependent upon him. Devoted to him. And we must be dependent upon him. Knowing that there's nothing we can do by ourselves. Most times look at the one that lost his son. He could not control the situation. He had no power to change the situation. He said as he was driving, he was driving, he was speeding, he was going to the hospital to go see if he can do anything. He got there, they said, oh, they pronounced him dead. At the point, he said he was going to blame himself. And he said the policy was telling him, no, don't blame yourself. There's nothing you can do because the time has come. Hallelujah. The pain is real. Be devoted to God when the pain comes and we must be dependent upon God. He says we will never understand everything God is doing in our lives. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways are your, my ways, saith the Lord. Verse 9 says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9. Worry has never solved any problem. We can worry from now to eternity. It's not going to solve the problem. Talk about worry. I worry so much that I have no idea how to even think straight. Because I constantly, constantly worrying about this. Could it be? Could it be? What is this going to be? How is this going to happen? Worried, and I realize the more I worry, the more devastated I get. The more painful the situation gets. The more I, 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 I just could not, I could not think straight. Worry could not solve the problem. It just causes you to be devastated from nothing. And you are just sitting down there, being depressed, worried about something that's not nothing is going to fix. But the only thing that can fix it, it says, be of good share. Don't worry about it. Say, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, in everything, just give make your request known unto Him, and He. And the peace of God, which passes all human understanding. The Bible says, it shall keep on the heart and the mind through Christ. And that is in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Let it be. Worry is not going to solve it. It didn't solve it for me. I'm not sure any, how many of us that have been worried about things and you were able to think straight to even solve the problem. You can't. And that is, the, that is part of the, de the, the devil's enemy's um, a tactic that he uses. So he will block you, make you feel like um thank you. You just continue to be anxious for nothing and you just continue to worry. Guess what? So you won't be able to think straight and look forward towards the solution to even find solution. You can't there's no way you can continue to worry and you'll be able to find solution to the problem. It's not possible. So the taxes of the enemy is to put that spirit of anxiousness inside of you and make you feel like, okay, you just continue to worry. Your worry is not going to solve the problem. It's just going to make it worse. Hallelujah. No matter how bad the pain gets, no matter how bad it is, every trial is a good thing for you. I don't know if I can say that again. No matter how bad, how horrible the pain is, and it gets. I want you to know that every trial, the good thing that is inside that trial. So we need to start seeing the good thing that's going to that's inside that trial, and what is God saying to us? The Bible says, "For all things are for your sake, that abundant grace might through the thanksgiving for many redounding to the glory of God." Verse sixteen says. For which causes we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light afflictions, which is but for the moment, 
That was the Bible study we said on Monday. The afflictions is just for a moment. The trials are just for a moment. The tribulations are for a moment. The temptations are for a moment. But guess what? You will overcome it. It says be of good cheer because God is with us. Hallelujah. So we need to, I have come, I don't want to waste your time because it's 724. I want to encourage you when the pain comes, the pains are real. If somebody tells you, I, 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 I feel your pain, they don't feel your pain. They can't feel your pain. If anybody is coming to tell you, um, I know what you are going through, but we go through differently. The way you handle your own pain is different the way I will handle mine. So when you are telling me you know you feel my pain, it's, it's kind of different because the way she will handle our pain is different from the way you see your own pain. It's different from the way I will handle mine. Hallelujah. So the only thing that is so, the only constant there is the Lord God knowing that he has given us that strength and he will continue to give us strength. He says he will not leave you nor forsake you. So when the trouble comes, when the pains come, please always remember. He said he will not leave you nor forsake you. And that will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number one, we must be devoted to God. Number two, we must be dependent upon him. Number three, that's my last point. We must be diligent before God. Diligent. Diligent. I already said the pains are real. The pains are important. And you, you and I need those trials to be able to move forward. It's our month of marching forward. And I pray as you begin to be diligent in God's word, in your fasting and praying, in doing God's will, in not allowing the evil to speak evil to your mind, in not allowing to let the, the spirit of anxiousness or worriness bother, and, uh, 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 bother you or worry you so much, God will show himself mightily in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And this charge I'm leaving you with tonight, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Your labor is not in vain. And I pray every of your labor, every of your love labor, everything that you have labored for God will not be in vain in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God Almighty will reward you. He said he is, the Bible says he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. As you continue to seek God, I pray for you tonight, your labor of love will never go unrewarded in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you tonight that God Almighty will continue to strengthen you. As the pain comes, because the pains are real, I will pray that God Almighty will give you strength. So when the, pray, the pain comes, you will not sin against God, but you will give glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you tonight that when the pain comes, that the same way Job was able to handle his own pain, the Bible says he went down on his knees and he worshipped God. And he said, naked I came and naked I will depart. He did not curse God. He did not speak evil. He did not curse his, uh, his neighbors. He did not curse his wife. But he looked at God. He said, God, I worship you. Because in everything, I give thanks to God. Father, we pray tonight that as the pain comes, oh Lord, you will continue to strengthen us and empower us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So that we will not sin against you. We will not say bad word against you. We will not look back and say, God, where are you? Where are your powers? We will not have question you because we know you do things according to your will at the right time. And so, Father, I pray tonight for everyone, other than the sound of my voice, that God Almighty will give us 
enough strength so when the pain comes we'll be able to go through it even not by ourselves even with the help of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ father we thank you tonight we give you glory we exalt you we give you all adorations in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen i have some copies of prayer points that we're going to go through briefly before we go home tonight and these are through the mic is the prayer of backslid that is affecting a lot of people when last night i i am taking one class as i was finishing not my um my studying and the very first thing that god gave me was the fruit of the backslide but a lot of people, especially in Fresno these days, we are we are not looking at the cross that we carry. We are looking at the circumstances around the cross. The circumstances around the cross is what is discouraging a lot of people from serving God. A lot of us say about God, but we don't know too much about him. So I want us to pray tonight that no matter what, Come towards me. Nothing forcing, nothing. What is this that can take me away from the love of God? Because the devil is here looking for him to devour everywhere, everywhere right now. And he's using things that we love the most, people that we love the most, people that we care about the most, people that we see pretty much almost every day. They are the ones the devil is using to attack our faith to draw us back away from the love of God. I want us to pray tonight that God, don't nothing in this world will take me away from your presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's bow down our head and begin to speak to God. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, this is the first day in the month of March. I pray that God Almighty, you will continue to uphold us, O oh Lord, in your faith in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not fall back. We will not fall back. We will not look back. The Bible says, who are putting his hand on the plow that look back? He does not deserve the crown. The Father, we want this crown, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the crown of glory. Father, we will not look back, oh Lord. We will stay focused with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No matter what the circumstances may throw at us, no matter what the life is going to throw at us, no matter what the enemy will plant and throw at us, oh Lord. Father, we pray, oh Lord, that you keep us perpetually in your peace, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we'll be able to serve you. We will not look back. We will not miss heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What is the, what is the gain of a, a person that gains the whole world, that loses his own soul? Father, I pray that everyone other the sound of my voice tonight will not lose their soul in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When the books and further books shall be opened, oh Lord, let our name be found even in the book of life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God Almighty, you will keep us away from sin and us away from sin, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen. That's a Bible verse that the Lord gave me last night. I'm going to share it with you. It's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 15 to 20. The book of Isaiah 32, verse 15 to 20. When you get home, please find time to read it. You will really understand what it means. Isaiah 32, verse um, 52. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do I have anybody who wants to give a testimony before we go home tonight? I know it's cold. The weather is going to be cold all this week. So, do you have a testimony? Come and share with it, Lord. It's going to be cold. Please, let's dress up very warm, okay? Please. Very, very important. Let's take this weather very serious. God bless you. Put your hands together as you encourage her, please. Good evening, church. Um, 
as you know, I'm a senior in high school, and um, the application process has been crazy. But um, I just wanted to properly thank God for um, allowing me admitted to two more schools, um, CUC Northridge and CUC Fullerton. And I just hope that he can bless me with more as the month of March continues. So I just like to thank him for pushing me through and getting me this far and blessing me with even more opportunities this school year. So thank you. Um, so today um, I had to say a speech for an AVA meeting at a school actually the elementary school right next to church, Fancy Creek. And um, I got there like an hour and, and 15 minutes early. And um, instead of just leaving and coming back, I decided to stay and help out um, with the special needs kids that they have over there in the classroom. And it was like a really great opportunity to like reach out and see how other people like how other people live and like just get to play with those kids. So, yeah. God will continue to order your steps in the name of Jesus Christ. She has been a good kid and I'm so proud of her. Good job, baby. And God will continue to guide you and protect you. You will not be at the wrong place at the wrong time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Peer pressure will not have no impact on you, even in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Any other further testimony? I have one testimony, but I'm not going to give it yet until I get my gown, my cap and gown, then I'll share the testimony. <laughs> then I'll share the testimonies. So let's, if we have an offering you have to share, you want to, um, uh, Yeti or Femi, could you please send me grab the um, basket if you, you know, want to bless God tonight with anything. Whatever you have, let's bless God. Let's package an offering to God and to Father. And if you want to do it on um, on Facebook, you can do it PayPal, um, Covenant, um, Faith, PayPal.me, I believe. Or if you want to do um, the phone number, you can dial 559-205-7443. 559-205-7443. Hallelujah. So you could do that. You just only take a couple of minutes to do that. And God will help you because God loves a cheerful giver. And he will continue to bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray over the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray over the offering. This out of our abundance you've given to us. The token we are giving you, Father. Father, let this token be multiplied in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you rebuke the devourer for our sake in the name of Jesus Christ. And every works of our hands, O oh Lord, shall be hereby blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God Almighty, you will expand our businesses, O oh Lord. You will bless our children in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God Almighty will rebuke every spirit of poverty in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. King of glory, you say shaking over, you have given unto the bosom of your people. Father, let this cup begin to run over, even to overflow in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, we bless and we worship you because we know the abundance of heaven is hereby given unto us, even this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, we bless and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. For some of you, I forgot to announce it on Sunday. This Saturday is going to be our Wow Women meeting. And I know it's going to be powerful. It's going to be very interesting. So if you have your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, just tell them, encourage them to come. It's going to be a very special time in his presence. So let's come together and celebrate Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Little Beth, could you please pass the uh, basket around as we're ready to go home? Any announcements?
comment to addition. No. Okay, I see you on Sunday. Let's rise up as we close this. Auntie, Minister Nicole, come and pray for us and that we go home. to leave on today. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father God, for all that you've done tonight, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your deliverance, oh God. We thank you for your presence, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for each and every one that is here on today, oh God. We ask, Father God, that you will not leave our your pre not leave us, Father God. As we leave this place, we ask that your presence, Father God, will continually be with us, oh God. We, we thank you, Father God, for the word, Lord. We ask that you would just be with us through the pain, Father God. Help us to seek you, to diligently seek you, Father God, and to do what we need to keep our eyes on you, even through the pain, Father God, as we know that you can deliver us, Father, as you know that you can turn everything the devil meant for evil for our good. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you, Father God. We give you all the glory and all the honor. And everybody say amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.